Good morning and welcome back to Pathways to Parenting podcast, supporting CoFight 19. This is Julie Johnson. Yesterday we turned our focus back to self-care, looking at how to balance our daily lives to build resilience as we seek to take care of our families and manage life in isolation. If you missed yesterday's podcast, it might be worth listening to that one first and then return to today's session. So yesterday we made a list of the daily activities that both nourish and deplete us, identifying which activities fell into which group. Having had a day's space between the exercises from yesterday and today, you may have thought of more items to go on the list, so add them on. Today we're going to look in more depth at how we can approach the depleting task differently. How might it benefit our well-being to regard them with a different attitude? Well, think of a job that you would do anything to get out of, but it's simply got to be done. So you grit your teeth and get on with it. Washing up, ironing, end of year accounts... What impact does it have on your mind and body when we resentfully apply ourselves to those depleting tasks? It's a bit like trying to avoid or resist a difficult thought or emotion. It simply makes everything worse, doesn't it? Now, I'm not for one minute suggesting you pretend to love the washing up, the housework, try and support your child with their schoolwork, or having to ask the same child maybe for the 10th time to just tidy up their toys. These have always been part of daily family life long before COVID-19 came on the scene and they will continue long afterwards but what we're dealing with now is the multiplication of these tasks alongside the shrinking of our lived experience and time away from them. In other words these depleting tasks are in our face all the time. We can't get away from them. Now add this with a massive loss of choice and control in our lives this is only going to amplify the powerfully depleting impact of these which then increases stress and starts to erode our sense of well-being. Now, as we've learned, it's really important to increase our nourishing moments and to savour them more. But at the same time, we need to learn to change our relationship with the depleting ones. Depleting tasks may never transform into nourishing ones, but they can become less depleting. Well, this is all great in theory, but how do we do it? Firstly, we need to train ourselves to turn towards them, as we did with negative feelings such as fear, Acknowledging that you don't like the washing up, but you accept it needs to be done. Then notice your attitude. Be curious to see how you could shift it. It may have a narrative. I hate washing up. Helping with maths is my worst nightmare. Well, that was mine as as a parent. Sorry, kids. Can you reframe that to help you find a benefit? For example, I don't enjoy washing up, but I really like seeing a clean, empty sink. Or I love listening to music while I do the boring tasks like ironing. Or doing mindless tasks like the dishes gives me a chance to practice deep breathing and reconnect with how I feel. Or might might you reframe your depleting tasks, in other words. So now, practice. Stop, drop and breathe. Take a moment to change the climate of your mind towards the tasks that you have to do. What's fascinating is the science behind these simple principles. When we seek to avoid, resist, push away... Believe it or not, we're activating the fight and flight part of our brain, releasing the stress hormones, adrenaline and cortisol. No wonder these tasks make us feel so miserable. The fight or flight response is great if you're in a life-threatening situation, but washing dishes does not count. Whereas if we acknowledge, accept, turn towards these depleting tasks, breathing slowly and deeply, we change the composition of hormones in our brains, reducing stress, helping ourselves to relate very differently to the task in hand. Apart from nourishment in our daily lives, we also have a need for a sense of pleasure and achievement. So go back to your list of nourishing activities and look again at them. Which ones give you a feeling of pleasure, achievement or both? Then mark them P, A or P, A. I suggest you take this list and bear it in mind during each day as you pause and ask yourself, what do I need right now? How best can I care for myself? And you could write these down on your list. You have potentially several options as you seek to bring wisdom to your choices and actions. Doing something pleasurable, being kind for yourself, to your body, engaging in enjoyable activity. Doing something which gives you a sense of achievement or satisfaction. Or continuing with whatever it is you're doing, but doing it with awareness. Noticing the attitude of your mind, widening your attention to include your body and your senses. These last two days have been about refocusing back on ourselves, checking in with how we are to make sure we're not pouring from an empty cup, but placing that oxygen mask on ourselves first. 
Tomorrow the podcast will have more meditations by Peter Johnson. There'll be the three-step practice to facilitate checking in when asking ourselves, what do I need now? The second one is called the body scan, which though a mindfulness meditation practice, many find at night time when they use it enables sleep. So pause, stop, drop and breathe. What do I need right now? Stay safe and see you tomorrow.